Welcome to video six in a series of introductory videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is the profile toolpath. The profile is one of the most basic toolpaths you will find inside SolidCam, uh, and it is a two and a half D toolpath, meaning that we'll just define the geometry and then we'll give it a depth to fall, uh, to go down in the Z direction. So let's start with finishing the outside of this part. I'm just going to open up a profile toolpath. Similar to all the other toolpaths inside SolidCam, the operation manager is about the same. We're going to start with the geometry. So I'm going to click on the new geometry button. And we'll choose our geometry right from the solid. In this case, I'm just going to choose again the top edge. That yellow line represents that is the selected line. The red arrow represents the cutting direction. And the blue lines represent the possible other directions this thing could take. So right now the red arrow is pointing in that direction. I could choose either this line right here or I can go down this line and then continue the geometry in whatever direction I want. In this case, I intend to do climb milling on the outside of the part. So I'm just gonna continue to choose those geometries as I go along. Similar to what you saw in video five in the pocketing toolpath, we can use all these options on the side here to continue our chain selection. So either I can click on the next arrow and just keep going around. As you see, it keeps following the direction of the, the red arrow. I could have already clicked constant Z and automatically just get all the Z connections with this one line. So if I click on this one line, everything on that same Z plane will be selected but let me just delete that one. For the profile toolpath, sometimes you find it necessary to change direction as you go along. Um, that's not necessary for this part, but it's a good example of what I want to show you. So let's say we choose this one line. Let me just turn off my constant Z. I choose this one line. And if there was an open pocket or for whatever reason, I can't continue on that same Z plane, but I could do it on the bottom. So let's say instead of going that way, we'll go this direction. So now we're going down there and I want to get back in the same direction I want to go. You can see with my show chain or work plane engaged, I actually see that purple projection of that line to the tool plane. So I'm actually still denoting the outside of the part. I'm just going on the bottom edge now. Now, if I were to click on constant Z uh, at this point, it would actually go all the way around the bottom edge. And that's not what I need because I want it to come back to this point right here. So one of the other options that are listed here is the up to entity. With up to entity, it's waiting for me to choose the next entity that I want it to get to and what relationship I want it to use to get there. So for instance, this edge right here is on this Z plane. I probably want to get back to this edge here before I go up. Rather than going around and choosing each edge or using the next button to get to each edge, I'm just going to say use constant Z to get to that edge. But first, I needed to check that box so it knows it's waiting for me to get to that edge. I'm just going to choose constant Z and this line right here. So now it goes all the way around in that same cutting direction, looking for a constant Z relationship until it gets to that edge there. And now I can just turn these off and I'll tell it just to go up that line right there. But I'm just going to choose everything on the top edge now because that's the entire outside of the part. Tool, I'm gonna to choose a quarter inch finishing tool. My levels, I can set it by the top of the stock. So you can see there, as soon as I say by stock, it finds the top of the stock definition. I can say by target, so it actually is going to the top of the target, which is this face right here, or user defined. User defined is actually if I manually choose the edge. So if I tell it I want it to start at this face right here, I can just click on that and you can see it gets that green color coding. The green indicates associativity with that face. So this toolpath will always start at that face, no matter what change I make to the model. So if I change the height of that pocket or the width of the part, this toolpath will always follow that exact outside edge and always follow the, uh, the upper level of this toolpath to be on that face. Similar to that, I'll do the same with the profile depth. I want it to go all the way down to this face here. Because I'm tying it into those faces, I don't want to change anything here. I don't want to lose the associativity, but I still want to go past that face in the Z direction. So that's what the delta box is for. As soon as I say something like negative 20 thou, 
it will go down 20 thou from that face. So the delta boxes are more like an incremental depth. If I go to technology, we'll see parameters specific to this profile toolpath. In this case, profile has a lot of different options, but they're more tailored to what you're trying to do. For instance, I mentioned that when we were choosing the geometry, the red line, the red arrow represented the cutting direction. Well, if in this profile toolpath, I wanted to be on the left side or the right side of that arrow, indicating climb or conventional cut, I had the ability to tell it which side of the tool I want to ride that line. I want the tool to either be on the left side of the arrow, in my case, climb cutting on the outside, or I can say right side of the arrow, it would actually be conventional cut on the inside of the arrow. Or if I'm using some sort of um, engraving tool or center point tool, anything that I want to follow the center line. Let's say I was doing a slot. I could choose a line and tell it to have the tool follow the center of the tool along that line. We have options of rough and finish. Roughing is essentially just a different module inside the profile where I say rough, I can add wall offset, floor offset, and I can give it an independent step down. But in this case, I'm gonna finish the outside of the part, so I'm gonna leave it as finish. I can tell it how many passes of the finish I'd like it to do. In this case, I'll leave it at one, but if you wanted to add a spring pass, you can set that to two. For whatever number of passes you want, you can plug it in there. Because I have a closed chain, I might actually have a witness line where I start the chain. So I'll put in a 10 thou overlap to eliminate any kind of witness lines. And then the step down, the step down of this part of this tool, I'll just set it at 250. That way we can actually just finish the entire part. Under link, I can tell it what lead in, lead out I'd like it to use for this toolpath. In this case, I'll set it to normal and I'll give it a lead in of 20 thou, and I'll just tell it to do the same thing on the lead out. I'll do a save and calculate, and you can see that the toolpath started at the beginning of my chain, but I actually don't want that. I want to start maybe somewhere in the middle. So in the profile toolpath, when I go to the technology section, I can actually say, click on this geometry button, and it allows me to modify the geometry slightly. If we get a top view of that, we can see the red circle representing my quarter inch tool, I don't actually want it to start there. I want it to start somewhere in the middle. So I'll just highlight the start position, click anywhere on my chain, and it shifts the start position to there. As Soon as I do that, save and calculate. Now you see the start position begins at the halfway point. Now, the depth of cut you can see is pretty uniform. But what we can do in the profile toolpath is actually keep the tool down. Rather than retracting and feeding down, that's actually going to probably leave a little bit of a witness line as well. I'd like it to keep the tool down and keep in constant contact with the material. So instead of a constant depth type, I'm going to change this to a helical depth type. What this will do is it will eliminate the step down and actually have it just progressively move down in Z as it machines the part. As you see here, there's one entry, one exit, and it's a constant helical motion around the part. One of the other things you can do with uh, the profile toolpath is a chamfering operation. So I'm just gonna, again, add a profile toolpath. Let's say we keep using that same geometry. So in this case, from the list, I can see I used contour three in that profile. I'll switch this to contour three as well. So I'm using that same chain. This time I'll add a chamfering tool. So here it is, chamfer mill. The levels for the chamfer mill, I'll leave it at zero. So the top face of the part and my depth, I'm just gonna tell it what depth I'd like to leave for my chamfer. In this case, let's say 20 thou. Under technology, I'll still have it on tool side left, but this time I'm gonna go down here to rest material slash chamfer and change it to chamfer. That opens up a second tab where I can tell it where on the tool I'd like to have riding my chain. In this case, from the, the definition of my tool, I'm telling it I want it to ride somewhere where 50 thou of a diameter can be found. So on that cone, somewhere uh, upwards from the tip of the tool is that 50 thou diameter. So that plus the fact that I told it it's going to uh, go down by 20 thou should give me a chamfer that I'm looking for. So again, I'm just going to change these two values that I would prefer. Save and calculate. And you can see now, if we do a simulate on this, if 
I have the tool come in. There's my 20 thou, and it dipped the tool so that the 50 thou diameter portion of the tool is riding along that chain. So that will actually generate a chamfer all the way around the part. Any questions on this or anything else about the solid cam software, you can contact us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.